Now, as we actually talk about these two different rooms, you may have noticed the one at the top of the stairs whenever you came up. That was actually the first International Space Station control room. It's called the Blue Room. We used that for the majority of our ISS operations in the early, or actually late 90s. But as we grew with the International Space Station, so did the need for consoles as well. So for that reason, we decommissioned that room at the top of the stairs and moved it to the new ISS room. That room, however, is still used for active operations involving the ISS. So if we ever need any extra consoles, anything like that, we will actually run over to that room. We also use it for all of our crew certification and training for the majority of the mission controllers that want to gain flight controller status. <coughs> Now getting back to this room right here, you look in the back right hand corner, you'll notice a cluster of patches in the uh, section over there next to the blue flag. And that is a position of honor and it is on the on mission side of the wall you may remember. Those patches are representative of the Apollo 1, the Challenger, the Columbia, as well as the NASA Memorial patch for all the astronauts who've lost over the various years in you know, training accidents and such, as well as on official NASA business. The men and women that we lost in those particular missions didn't just die for the American Space Administration or the country that they actually hail from, but it was all part of a collective active effort that we do have with the ISS as well as the 23 other various countries that are involved with this program to bring us forward into an actual future of knowledge, cooperation, and exploration. Now, ladies and gentlemen, time here at Mission Control is rather short. You have a lot more to see on your tour for the rest of the day. In the event that you do have any more advanced questions, I'll be standing in the upper left-hand corner at liberty to answer those. Uh, and don't feel shy or bashful because I'm very knowledgeable of this particular stuff. I've been here for quite a long time now. And if you do not have the, uh, well, if I don't have the answer to one of your questions, I'll be able to find it out for you. Okay, folks? I hope you enjoy the rest of your tour. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. You'll just be exiting back here in the back of the Welcome to the Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility. The floor down below us is where astronauts learn how to live and work in space. This area of Building 9 has the space station mock-ups. Astronaut Mike Fossum points out a few of the training units you can see here. These are actual training units that we use a lot for crew training. The engineers use these to go in and make sure that new equipment's going to fit when we fly it up to the space station itself. This is actually a working laboratory that you're looking at here. The pieces of the space station are spread about on the floor. Most of them are roughly in the configuration that we have in space, but because we're limited to the flat floor, there's some things that are laid out a little bit differently here, but it gives you an idea for the sheer magnitude of all of these elements of the space station. One of the big ones right in front of you is a U.S. laboratory, and inside that are most of the equipment in the rack. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, please remember to stay close so you can clearly hear and see everything I'll be describing. I'll be starting shortly. portions of the shuttle orbiter. These are called the crew compartment trainers or CCTs. 
The CCTs can be rotated in both vertical and horizontal positions for launch and landing procedures. With uh, both the CCTs and the FFT are high fidelity mock-ups, which means everything inside lighting, medical equipment, uh, meal preparation, the waste management system. Oh, that's one of those, um, what you call it? Can the astronauts practice using the highly articulated robotic arms used to manipulate objects in space? It is equipped with a shoulder with a yaw, pitch, and roll, an elbow with a single degree of movement, and a wrist with a yaw, pitch, and roll as well. Uh, the Building 9 Station robotic manipulator simulates how we do operations on board the International Space Station and in order to triple that amount of training so that we really know what we're doing when we get into space. The large blue structure in the back and on the right is the docking simulator. It requires careful skill and training when docking something as large as the International Space Station and the Shuttle Orbiter. Whenever you see a spacecraft on TV, it looks as if it is just floating. However, it's actually traveling at a speed of 17,500 miles per hour, roughly 5 miles per second. This concludes this portion of the tour. Follow your tour guide down the stairs and back onto the tram to resume your tour of Johnson Space Center. Yeah. Check out how tall it's sticking up the roof. No, it's not.